Jam. <laughs> Toon Jam. Hello and welcome to Toon Jam Podcast. I am Matt. And I'm Jayman. And today we are taking our final steps in the marathon of MTV cartoons with Spider-Man, the new animated TV series, also known as MTV Spider-Man. Uh, this is probably the most different of the entries that we've watched so far and also the newest. So a little bit of background for you on Spider-Man, the, anim the new animated series also known as MTV Spider-Man. It is an American Canadian animated television series based on the Marvel comic book superhero known as Spider-Man. The show was made using computer generated imagery or CGI. Rendered Ooh. in cell shading. So this is one of the probably earlier examples of cell shading. Mm. Um, it ran for only one season of 13 episodes, premiering on July 11th, 2003, and was broadcast on MTV and YTV. Why? Who knows? As of October 13th, 2018, Viceland picked up the series for syndication, making it the first time the series had been aired on television in 15 years in mm. america i imagine I, I remember it being shown repeatedly over here but mm. not on mtv no i think i watched it on like fox kids or something yeah that sounds right. whatever we watched it on and um, the story follows the events of the first spider-man film so norman osborne is dead uh peter parker mary jane watson and harry Os osborne attend Empire State University so it kind of does follow it but also doesn't a little bit yeah. it's that classic um, cartoon of a film that's also its own thing mm. so any relationship between the, the characters seems to have disappeared so you've still got him and MJ a will they won't they relationship type thing um, and Harry Osborne is also absolutely nothing like he is in the film in fact, none of them are really. No, are. no, nobody is. Um, it's more. I think it's. Uh, it took a lot of inspiration from Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah. The comic book series, uh, and is even uh, co-executive produced by Brian Michael Bendis. The show itself uh, was directed by Brandon Vietti, who you may also know from Young Justice. Ah. So, yeah, fun fact for you, it, it was uh, cancelled on a cliffhanger uh, due to poor ratings. But the, he said that if they had carried on, they would have used uh, villains such as Mysterio, Vulture and more Craven. Uh -huh. So there you go. There's plenty of cameos and bizarre like sort of... Uh, guest stars in this series uh, mm -hmm. Stan Lee obviously makes an appearance at some point uh, Rob Zombie <laughs> appears in it as Dr Kurt Connors oh yeah uh, Kathy Griffin's in there uh, who else have we got Ed Asner Tara Strong yeah, Keith uh, David in this episode don't Keith we? David yeah John C McGinley is in one mm -hmm. um, and I think the biggest one was uh, Michael Clark Duncan as Kingpin. Yeah. Which is pretty crazy. That's that's almost like uh, an early jaunt into a shared universe. Yeah. Seemingly. Though, again, he's not quite the same as he is in Daredevil. No. He's very more food oriented. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, so it was it was well received uh, and had had uh, good reviews for its darker approach, which I don't think it did have a darker approach, if I'm honest. It doesn't seem that much darker. No, it seems to me just like a newer version of Spider-Man mm. with CGI, not not at all a darker approach. But hey ho, um, do you remember watching this? Obviously, we've just said we saw it on fox kids maybe yeah uh i used to i had this on dvd oh. uh, 
not yeah. even on video this one no, not true. even on video I had it on uh, dvd um the it was uh, unfortunately like a digi pack so like you know the case is shafted uh because it's made out of cardboard but uh, this used to be one of my like sleepy time shows where basically i'd like put this on and then fall asleep to it yeah you know, and then just you know enter some sort of weird blissful spider-man dream world um, yeah. as, I, as i went out yeah i don't know why i, I did this all the time when i was younger <laughs> but like, it was like this the like teen titans future armor <laughs> just fall asleep to cartoons for some reason yeah i used to i used to do the same i used to stay up late watching uh cartoons i used to watch uh home videos mm. and uh baby blues two, <laughs> uh, very bizarre shows also yeah. uh space coast oh yeah nice just because they were on cartoon network late so right, yeah just the tv on play it really quietly so my mum couldn't hear that i was up like volume on three so you <laughs> yeah. can't even hear it yeah nobody can hear it <laughs> but you've seen it that many times that it doesn't matter anyway that's it but yeah uh i do i do, I used to watch this i watched this quite a lot and repeatedly mm. though i didn't have it on dvd uh i just watched it when it was on tv all the time i, I loved it yeah it came out it was just what i needed after the film or well, films i don't know when the second one came out yeah, I can't remember which where it was in the in the film timeline, but it's around then. But it's set after the first yeah. one. So but I'm one. pretty sure we were all on some sort of spider hype at this point. It's fair yes, to say. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was. Uh, I loved it at the time. Um, mm. So it was interesting to go back and uh, review it. Uh, it doesn't. First, first thing I'll say, it doesn't feel like an MTV cartoon. No. And I think that's partially probably. I can imagine ratings were low. Mm. Simply because it doesn't, it feels like it belongs on just a normal sort of like Cartoon Network, Fox Kids, mm. I would say, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't feel like it's an MTV. Sort of like struggling for an audience, maybe, because it's, it's not quite adult enough, you'd say, no. to be MTV. Uh, but then there, there are a few darker moments that they say <laughs> that maybe they couldn't put it on you know well i mean they wouldn't because it's an mtv show but yeah. like you know maybe they'd struggle to get it on something else in in the daytime maybe so yeah, maybe maybe that's why they're rating to so low because it's just a very niche audience like yeah yeah because i would have been about 14 when this came out mm. so i guess you know we were watching it when we were teenagers yeah so we we probably fit into the mold quite well but. yeah all those MTVers that had grown up with, like, you know, Beavers and Butthead and stuff, expecting something a bit more uh, crude, maybe. Yeah, a bit more, like, weird and... Yeah, weird and wonderful. Yeah. Whereas this is a fairly straightforward Spider-Man cartoon. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a far cry from liquid television. Yeah. Uh, the episode we watched was uh, Royal... something. Uh... I can't remember the name of the episode. Yeah, Sorry, that's, uh, professional as always. Uh, but it was the one with the kingpin in, um, which is, of course, Michael Clark Duncan, mm. as I stated, uh, which I didn't know uh, at the time. It just came on. I had to look it up. I was like, that's really? it. and they just got someone that sounds like him because because of obviously the, the film. Um, but no, it was him. Mm -hmm. um, pretty crazy. I mean, I know we've just said this, but. That was the first thing that that sort of set me back. I was like, "Wow, that's actually really cool." Yeah. Um, and it got to, got me to thinking as well about um, sort of recasting characters as different races and whatnot, mm. and how I guess this this was one of the first examples of it, at least in a comic book mm. sense. I don't remember it ever being a problem no i feel like this is this just is kind of proof that um uh, clickbait articles and things like that are what have caused the outrage in in this what what people would claim to be over pc situation mm. um although because if 
in this case, the, you know, they just did it. Obviously, we didn't really have social media. Yeah. When uh, Daredevil came out, so Michael Clark Duncan was cast, uh, and I just remember being like, "Yeah, cool. He, he's massive." <laughs> yeah, actually, he really fits the role. Yeah, well done. Yeah. I remember well thinking at the time, like, "Yeah, you'd have to get." him because there's no one big enough yeah to... who has that stature in yeah, like right. he was giant yeah so um i mean obviously they've done it since and mm. you know it was all you know very good but it was still cool like th- this was a case where just no one complained it happened it was good mm. i mean no one liked the film but i don't remember him ever being anyone's problem with it no no it just went under the radar didn't it no no issue whatsoever just mm-hmm. yeah just what they yeah. did and that's how it's gone down and everyone seemed pretty happy with it yeah but but nowadays it's just not how it goes <laughs> no yeah like every time black white or green no one's happy with it so their own opinion is like all that matters i suppose mm. i imagined this person and it's not them Oh. Yeah, everyone's their own casting director. Right? Bring back Michael Clark Duncan. <laughs> yeah. He's dead. <laughs> we can't. Oh, you've ruined cinema. <laughs> I'll never, I'll never watch a Spider-Man film again. That's it. I do, I do like that where people like try and kamikaze the the system, <laughs> like. <laughs> Just like, you will regret this because me, I will not watch your film now. <laughs> yeah, like, and, and if cool. I don't watch your film, that means nothing. Yeah. It's just like, okay, cool. I've yeah. lost someone that I never wanted to deal with in the first place. Yeah, but and that's... I think we're getting to a point now where surely we've got to realise that it doesn't matter. Like, these, no matter how ridiculous these films end up being or how bad decisions are made people still go and see them oh yeah yeah (laughs) it's like there's not there's nowhere near enough of you to be able to offset the amount of people that will still go and see it (laughs) yeah exactly so like there's you know you're just gonna have to lump it and hope it's good and yeah if everyone just shut up about stuff Mm. it might make such a difference watching films would be so much easier yeah um, but we digress. Mm. Spider-Man, the new animated series. This is what you came for. This is it. This is what we're giving you. Um, so Peter Parker is um, is at university, and the episode he basically is trying to he's just trying to go to MJ's acting performance. Mm. But like she's on some sort of weird actor showcase. But every time she does, something comes up. The the fake FBI are tricking him into stealing something, mm. which turns out to be Kingpin. Uh, then he then the real FBI <laughs> on this, <laughs> this case, um, so he has to stop Kingpin. That's I mean that's the gist of the episode in it. There's no real. Yeah. It's not a complicated episode. No. Um, Kingpin, like I say, loves his food, loves it so much that he has a hamburger on his limo aerial yeah that was a weird one so if you're ever looking for a limo <laughs> that might be kingpins if you're trying mm. to think where would he be look for the one with a hamburger on it yeah which is exactly what spider-man did yeah that's how he hunted him down that's how he found him so that was, uh, that's his favorite joint isn't it <laughs> yeah but i mean it's weird like what, what i found weird is how basically they kind of just allude to him being fat rather than yeah like a, a big guy yeah yeah and then um like his a, like henchman mm. like generic henchman gives him a burger mm. and he's like you best not be bad to eat that <laughs> and then the henchman is like you know i don't eat this crap yeah I just feel like that's so disrespectful to you, to like the kingpin. Surely he would not be happy with that. Yeah, you think he? Yeah, that was a weird moment. Like, like he's he's dissing this you. This one disses he's him. Dissing you, fam. 
He's calling you fatty boy. Yeah. Says you're eating the poo poo. And you just eat it in front of him happily. <laughs> he does, and you proper chow down. Ah, blah, blah, yeah. Blah. yeah, there's another moment where he makes like a jock off coffee in the uh, in the boardroom and then yeah, puts like a load of whipped cream much. on it. <laughs> <laughs> like a tower of whipped cream. Yeah, a huge stuff. tower of whipped cream. <laughs> and it's just this weird, like, like, isn't it Peter's drinking a cup of coffee? Yeah, yeah, like this transition, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the transition, literally, the coffee cup has to stretch. Yeah, it just enlarges <laughs> 25 times the size that <laughs> it's in Kingpin's hand. It's pretty funny. And and like, yeah, anybody just... else want some coffee? <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> like finishes the entire like pot into his cup. So bizarre. It is really weird what they focused on. Um, I think for a, for an MTV series, mm. um, this is like the one thing I will say um, is that it has some of maybe if not the worst music. <laughs> for any series I've ever ever watched. <laughs> so it's so far from your street. Oh my, yeah. I mean, it may be a personal preference if I'm honest, but it it upsets me to hear it. Oh yeah, I I loved it, mate. I, oh, I, I bet you. Like, as I was falling asleep, just hearing that the those synth chords go off on the theme tune. Your trance. It's like when the when the intro started. I'm not. I'm not exaggerating. I promise you. I threw up. <laughs> I had to clean up everywhere, and then I had to deal with the between scene similar music. Oh uh, yeah. By a pair of, uh, I think they're British musicians. Some like DJs that just. It's a weird. It is a weird selection for the mtv because it could easily be like college rock could have been the sound yeah, i mean that would fit in quite well with the most been, of the environment was it even like that popular at the time that kind of music um in certain circles like i think it's just it like because it was kind of trying to be futuristic in a way i think so i yeah. think trance kind of helps with that element doesn't it especially with like the flashy visuals and in, in the opening titles it's all like you know and like, i suppose because it's like because it was like it's like some of the it's like uh, it is it's still early CGI in a sense, isn't it, for TV series? Yeah. Uh, there yeah. wasn't many TV series. I mean, the one we've watched a lot of the ones that came before. So like, <laughs> reboot, which is you know good for its time, but quite clunky still. Yeah. Um, Johnny Quest. Quest, which was just something else. <laughs> uh, this this is at least this is like, it's still got you can you know it's aged, mm. um, but it's fairly fluid isn't it yeah and i think um because it's cell shaded as well like yeah it's, that everything always kind of looks a bit more slick because it's it's kind of meant to be like that isn't it like yeah like they're not trying to put loads of detail in that just fails it's like everything's kind of clean cut and it looks kind of smooth and, and nice yeah um, so yeah the cell shading definitely helps and i mean like i, I always really liked the look of cell shade and anyway so this is something that another thing yeah. that attracted me to the series like i just like the way that it looks um, yeah same here and i mean the, i mean it's it sort of paved the way for plenty of shows since yeah um i mean i think if there's like a star wars one out at the moment that's mm. like you know all cell shaded right uh the is it Dragon Prince or something like oh, that? Oh yeah, Dragon Prince. Yeah. Yeah, that one's uh, also cell shaded. Mm. So there's there's plenty of them now, and this is the first example of it uh, that I can think of. Yeah, I can't think of another one that did it like this. But it seems tight. I remember the Ultimate Spider-Man game. Yeah. Was also cell shaded, wasn't it? And that came out a similar time. Mm. So it was kind of cool. I, I like I like that whole I like the thing they do. You know when a movie becomes popular and they sort of bring a cartoon series out, but but they even though they have to add elements of it, mm. separate it. Yeah. Which I think I guess sort of came with Batman was sort of the first example that I can think of. Mm. 
and then they just obviously did their own thing after but it's got all the movie music hasn't it yeah yeah and yeah, this so this you, feels you know like it's related but it's still like its own thing yeah mm-hmm. and this feels like it could have been that as well yeah. it, you know if it had carried on for a bit yeah definitely it's it's like the cgi is new enough to still enjoy like you yeah. can like i say there's bits of it that you're like yeah you know his his whipped cream looks hilarious <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that but it's not it's almost like it's charming isn't it yeah that's it it's, it's, it's a lot different than than you know going back to johnny quest and things just looking wrong yeah <laughs> like frightening is it because the cgi is so dodgy yeah very much um the voice acting you we've got uh, neil patrick harris as spider-man i don't know if i actually mentioned that before no i don't think so. um it's a different i think it's a different one it's not one you'd think like yeah that's perfect but i think he does a decent well, then, job yeah yeah and then when you think you're like yeah i suppose yeah <laughs> yeah because he's it's, it's a different peter parker though isn't it he, he's yeah. a lot less he's like he's a lot less nerdy like they're all kind of like cool kids aren't they like yeah especially like harry is just some sort of like did i like you know rich player who just never goes to college or whatever i don't even yeah. understand why it's even there because he's he never goes the to... difference between capitalism and communism yeah <laughs> <laughs> and he's just living it up in his you know in his big house or whatever and then mary jane's obviously like you know cool she's like a actress on the scene and stuff and like everyone's just kind of like a cool mtv counterpart of their previous versions yes, definitely <laughs> and that's part of i guess like usually spider-man is a bit more nerdy mm. uh, but then he kind of went through a phase of not being as much of a nerd didn't he yeah um and i suppose it's weird because being a nerd isn't the same now <laughs> yeah that's true as it as it was back then like you know a nerd is i guess is a different breed because mm. the stuff that nerds are into yeah is now you know it's like popular culture <laughs> yeah it's like ge- geek chic in it it's called yeah that's it it's like if you're a nerd now then like you know people want people need you and they hire you to like do their website and stuff yeah so <laughs> you're in high demand if you're which a nerd is now. weird because i remember that happening a lot in cartoons Mm. like you know images of the future yeah where the nerd always became like super rich and cool yeah which i guess has always been the case in, in a way not necessarily mm. super cool but nerds have always been the one that succeed later in life and mm-hmm. jocks often is the reversed yeah but now yeah. it seems that even like i mean i don't know but the youth like it's cool it's cool to like stuff that would have been nerdy when we were kids oh yeah definitely Mm. so it's quite it's quite a change so it is no wonder that spider-man has started to change yeah because even in the new films you know he's not really no he's not like even flash thompson is a nerd yeah it's like they're all it's just everyone's a nerd Mm and like yeah the, now he's got his is, is it ned his mate or whatever like yeah. like he kind of plays that side of the role doesn't he because he's yeah. like the guy who's always on the computer so spider-man's just kind of like a normie <laughs> yeah. he's just he's like just as smart but doesn't yeah. have to do it because he's got and 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 it's basically the only the only reason that the other guy is such a nerd mm. is probably just because he's fat yeah that's true that's probably why they've cast him as it yeah um i mean he does a good job don't get me wrong but bless yeah. him you know i feel like that's why they picked him yeah so i guess that's materialistic uh materialistic youth at its best <laughs> unbelievable but in this no one's a nerd yeah they're like everyone's cool it's just basically spider-man is smart mm which still works it's you know yeah it's fine. yeah it doesn't, it doesn't shift anything out of the out of what you're expecting really at all like it's actually weird how much it fits like from the first episode you'll ever watch it's like yeah this works like yeah like it's it's odd how natural it is to just have peter parker as you know someone that's just you know not constantly like putting their glasses back up to their eyes yeah 
Well, because that's it. I mean, I think the the core of Spider Man is that he is an he's an awkward youth. Mm. And like, no matter how cool he is, and no matter how cool you are, there's always things that you need to sort of that you that you're going to feel awkward about. And it's more about like the hormones of a teenager, isn't it? Like everything's yeah. awkward at that age. Mm. And you know, you're just trying to fit in whilst also trying to be someone different which you know it's never going to work because it never makes sense yeah and that's, that's, yeah i guess that's nature. <laughs> yeah yeah and like spider-man just kind of enhances that because you've obviously got that constant sort of romance of side of, of mary jane um and the hormones that rage in that direction yeah. and then obviously like be like understanding your identity is tenfold because he is two different people yeah he's, <laughs> he's got to do spider-man he's literally and, like he is special but he is trying to fit in yeah he's yeah. got that say it's like it's it's clever really isn't it yeah yeah it's, it's a really well done like character uh, and it's yeah it's no wonder that you know spider-man is really you know one of the biggest marvel properties if not mm. the biggest yeah um and one of the biggest superheroes because it's just such a especially for young people so relatable so relatable exactly um, and this is, yeah, but this is, a, it's like a strange newer take, but it's not that strange. Mm. Um, and I suppose when you look at it, I suppose like uh, Miles Morales, Spider-Man. Yeah. He, he isn't, he isn't a nerd at all. No. Uh, he's, you know, he's, he's actually cool. Mm. Full on just like graffiti and stuff. And that's it. It's the opposite. Yeah. Uh, but it still has that same appeal. Mm. And he still struggles with everything that's thrown at you as a teenager yeah. sort of thing. So. But then that might be the Brian Michael Bendis approach to it. Mm. It's like yeah, it's it looking at it. Yeah. See, so both are his brain children, if you will. <laughs> yeah. Was there anything that really, you, you know, you weren't sure on? Uh, in the series? yeah um not not really i think i think it all kind of settled like quite well really um despite it being a little different um yeah. I, li I, I did like everything about it really um i know there was some sort of odd additions and stuff like and i like as the series goes on he kind of like because we see at the end of this episode that mary jane kind of goes off with some guy from the theater or whatever yeah. and then there's there's like a a, a news reporter called like indie or something right, where he yeah, sort of starts getting interested in she's essentially a mixture of gwen stacy and uh betty brandt right so I, I think that's like she's designed to sort of fit in with both both of those. right yeah yeah so he sort of like ends up getting sort of more interested in her as that goes along so there's sort of like a weird love triangle situation kind of. yeah because um, yeah, and that does happen with spider-man yeah yeah um, hilariously you know for someone that's like <laughs> super nerd that can't get any girls yeah he just always seems to have yeah he's kind of trying to balance them all or yeah. the ladies <laughs> peter player more like you know? yeah you know yeah but yeah, other, I mean, I, I think I pretty much just enjoyed the series all the way through. Like, I don't think there was anything that stood out that was like, oh, uh, yeah, like, you know, back when I watched it. Now it's a bit weird just watching Kingpin have, like, you know, an obsession with Burger World and sort of things like that. But, yeah, especially after, you know, watching sort of the newer Daredevil stuff where, yeah. you know, he slams someone's head off with a car door. <laughs> yeah, it's a very different game. It's there. a very different approach. But, you know, you'd expect that from a cartoon. Mm. I mean, you compare it to the old Spider-Man series, Kingpin. Yeah. Who was closer to sort of a more sinister M. Bison. Yeah, that's it. And I mean, Smythe did all the legwork anyway. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and look where it got him. Yeah, exactly. Nowhere to be seen. Nowhere to be seen. <laughs> Forgotten Alan. Sure, to the point where if I saw him in anything, like yeah. if, if they said, right, they're doing another Spider-Man film, the villain is Smythe. Like I wouldn't be bothered about watching it. No. Maybe for the laughs, but yeah. 
Yeah, you wait till it winds up on Netflix and just giggle at it. But yeah, you never go out of your way to watch. Like he is in he is in one of the films. Is he? Yeah, the uh, you know the the Amazing Spider Man. Yeah. The uh, Andrew Garfield films. Yeah. He was in the second one. Right. And he was played by Ryan from the American Office. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's very funny. And they were on about bringing him in for the next one, I think. Oh but... yes, Smythe. So Smythe could have been could have been on our screens again. It really was on our screens again, but. Ah yeah, I didn't even know that. That's a good pick, actually. He's yeah, there you go. Yeah. He's just missing the mullet. That is something. Uh, yeah, that's what you want. Yeah, you, you need mullet. that serious businessman mullet mm. that's so common. <laughs> <laughs> Such an eighties look. Yeah. In a 90s cartoon. Yeah. Who knew? Who knew? What about you? Did you have any, uh, what are your, your issues with the... With... Oh, the music. Just the music. <laughs> the music was the big one. Just really, just horrifically upsetting. No, but other than that, no, I, you know, the only other thing I will say, um, which isn't really a problem, but I did think like, hmm, funny choice. He seems to be wearing like the Hulk's trousers. Yeah. What is the deal with that? No one, like... Why do people wear purple trousers all the time in these yeah. comic things? Where do they get them from? I, I've, I I've never them. seen them. No. But, you know, that's not a problem. It's just something no. I saw. Mm. Yeah, OK. Well, on that note, let's uh, let's let's roll on with our um, reviews. Hi, Alistair Smythe here, and I'm here to tell you about my new mullet spray. Spray and Smythe's mullet will stay on no matter what. Smythe, uh, I'm on the way to, to work. Can I can I have a mullet at work? Of course you can. A mullet is perfect for any situation, whether you're at work, at home or on the field. Smythe, spray, spray and the mullet sticks. But Smythe, uh, I'm on the way to get a, a bagel. Uh, can, I have a, can I have a mullet on the go? Mullet on the go is the perfect hairdo to wear. Spray the mullet sticks, whether you're eating, you're breathing, or you're talking. Spray. Mullet is perfect. But Smythe, I'm working for a, a secret mastermind who plans to take over the city. Can I have a mullet in his meetings? Not only can you have a mullet, but you should have a mullet. Spray. The mullet is, uh, is perfect for any situation. You will be taken seriously no matter what. With new Smythe's mullet. Spray it on and keep it since 1980. I've got a Smythe. Spray and the mullet sticks. Okay, so here at Toon Jam, we have a three point rating system that goes as follows. Thumbs up, thwip, thwip. Thumbs down, mullet. Shaky middle. Will the mullet stick? <laughs> really um so it's good bad you know on the fence not really sure so spider-man the new animated series also known as mtv spider-man your thoughts well um for me um i like i like new things and this is the new animated spider-man so oh, exactly st straight away i'm like hello this sounds like something for me um I do like that they mix things up because, um, you know, you don't want to be watching your, your great granddad Spider-Man all, all the time, do you? Do you know what I mean? That was, well, that's, exactly. from the past. that's from the past. It's, you know, it's it was all right back then. But I, I want something a bit new, a bit fancier. I want a Peter Parker with Hulk's trousers on. You know, that's, that's <laughs> the kind of thing that I'm looking for. Um, and yeah, like it had those new additions. We've got, um, you know, characters are cool, um, cell shaded. Um, you know, new spins on the villains and stuff as well. Um, and I, I think overall it was it was very palatable for me. You know, if I could fall asleep watching it, it was a nice, <laughs> easy watch. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think I just enjoyed everything from from the music even uh, to, you know, oh. the voice cast. They, they did. It's kind of cool that they did have some musicians, like you've said before, go in. So there was that, that little bit of MTV in there still. So it still has yeah. like a link to music, no matter how, you know, <laughs> trivial it may have been. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, and, you know, I'd still go back and, and watch them again. Like, I, I think they're, I think they're solid, solid episodes. So it's a thumbs up from me. 
Nice, nice. Thumbs up. Okay, yeah, well, I uh, I agree with most of what you said. It was uh, very enjoyable. It, it flew by as well. It didn't feel slow. Mm. It had some, uh, I mean, just the fact that the Kingpin was in it, Michael Clark Duncan's Kingpin, was just a really cool addition. Yeah. But it still felt like its own show. And, and it kind of shows you sort of, you know, the freedom you have with these cartoons because they're not as, um, you know, I guess mainstream and considered super, super, super important, taken way too seriously. Mm. It's more fun and it's just what you want. You know, you have everyone in it, you watch it, you feel happy at the end of it. It's nothing, you don't have to commit to anything. That's it. You don't have to commit to, you know, 20 years of your life <laughs> just to see how it ends. <laughs> it's just, it, it's the way it should be, I think. Mm. And, and like you say, it's a nice, uh, more modern take on the subject mm -hmm. uh, and it's not that the subject needs a modern take but it's nice to have a modern take yeah well, especially when there's so much out there um and it's been around for so long so yeah i mean the only the only big issue i had was the music and it mm. really upset me and for that reason i am going to go thumbs down <laughs> <laughs> no not really <laughs> i had you I no it was a thumbs up yeah great show and like for saying it's cg mm. it could easily have dated way too much yeah it's surprising how much it's actually you're like oh this actually still looks pretty all right like yeah yeah still like watch it's fast mm. like it moves around quite quite well and stuff yeah it was quite cool actually like the, there was like a helicopter chase scene in this and it was kind of like a it's like a flashback to the original Spider-Man opening, you know, where he's just yeah, like yeah. cruising through the buildings almost. And it's like, oh, yeah, this is a new version of it. Like, this is a new version where the CG is good. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so. OK, so two thumbs up. Mm. Can't complain. I've got to say, mm. MTV, <laughs> they have brought it. That's it. You guys know what you're doing. That's incredible. So just to like to recap. We have watched uh, six episodes. All of them have received thumbs up except for The Head, mm. which got two middles. <laughs> now, it is no. rare that we agree on so many things. I mean, we, we often agree. Mm. But on these, we've had the same ratings for every cartoon. Yeah. So, yeah. How mainly crazy. thumbs up as well. Mainly thumbs up. That's that is pretty impressive. Mm. You know, you'd think there'd be something in there. I mean, to be fair, we only picked a few. Yeah. You know, and we and we did pick the sort of better known ones. Um, but we have watched, uh, we've watched ones before. We've watched Daria before, haven't we? Yeah. That also was two thumbs up. So. So, and they, TV. those MTV folk, um, they knew what they were doing. They do. And they, they've churned out some class. Mm. and it's a shame to see that they don't really do so much anymore yeah um i i did i did end up watching a little um you know a few there's a few videos about of like why mtv changed and i think that the sort of essentially what what happened was it just wasn't um like financially viable to yeah. have little shows all the time and you know essentially keep running music videos because of the way that ads work in tv so oh, okay yeah, so you know to when you get a, a 20 minute you know 30 minute show like whatever reality show you've got because you can have ads you know start middle end um and because there's something that appeals to the people yeah uh, that the ads want to appeal to yeah it's essentially hard. that's way easier to monetize than having you know random music videos of different you know they're so varied and then obviously weird cartoons is kind of an odd audience that you know most mainstream advertisers don't <laughs> don't really want yeah, to put their stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I think, yeah, oddly, um, you know, MTV started with like the Real World, which was kind of like the first sort of inside Big Brothery type reality show. And they started that like while they were doing all this in the nineties, and then as things evolved, um, and they needed to, to you know get more money, they ended up leaning on that hard. So they kind of sort of yeah. almost invented the format and then now that's become what they are entirely. So um, it had to become like pop like actual popular mm. 
um, rather than sort of, you know, the edgier stuff, it had to become the mainstream. Yeah, yeah, that was that was kind of its fate, really. It's yeah, life. yeah, which is a weird, it's a weird journey, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so, almost yeah. You kind of want them to do like a. Uh, I know they sort of we talked about it briefly, and but they, you know, I don't think they've done much with it, but. It'd be cool if they, you know, there was like a an online, old school version of MTV. Yeah, or at least like you know they have like the sister channels and stuff. Because wasn't like MTV Two like the alternative version at some point? Like that was kind of like yeah. didn't they sort of shift it and it was like that was kind of the cool one still. So like yeah. it'd be it'd be good if they still had like a version that was that because I think nowadays as well you could get um advertisers that would want to appeal to that audience specifically so yeah. um you know maybe maybe that's something I imagine that's... it's a case i mean again this is just me like guessing um but you imagine working on the original mtv and mm. you've got edgy cool sort of platform and then it has to become the mainstream thing that you've been basically <laughs> taking the mick out of for the last yeah. years you you eventually you'd leave wouldn't you yeah you yeah. find work elsewhere so it probably just lost all those kind of those guys people. and mm. then as you know the people that were being made fun of mm. basically infiltrated it and are the only ones so they just get rid of stuff like that because they didn't want it yeah but yeah you know it's a shame they don't do it now because that's not like like with shows like adventure time and stuff mm. you know there's more of an audience for these kind of things now Oh, definitely. Yeah. Or at least a more vocal audience. That's it. Well, I think essentially Adult Swim's kind of taken its place now, hasn't it? Really? I guess so, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that yeah, they've kind of beat them at their own game almost. Because um, that, that is where adults go for cartoons, really, uh, and that kind of humour. Um, so, you know, maybe, maybe MTV will, will realise that and fight back and we'll get like a resurgence of old MTV. <laughs> yeah. Sort of like to compete with Adult Swim, maybe, but otherwise, yeah, they might just stick to, you know, what's churning the cash in, which is reality stuff. Yeah. Well, there you go. There you go. So MTV, overall, a thumbs up. Yeah, thumbs up. 90s to early noughties MTV. <laughs> That's it. <Very> <laughs> <specific>. <laughs> clarify that. <laughs> Modern MTV, personally, thumbs down was out for me yeah oh so it's that's incredible yeah the difference um but it's been interesting it's been interesting going and visiting something like wholly unique and mm. something you probably won't really get again that's it in the same format um not only in the way that it's made in the way that it's presented and the fact that it's an actual channel rather than just something online and stuff mm. you're not going to get that era of mtv with anything ever again that's it it's a completely unique for the time and uh should be celebrated i guess yeah at least in the media circles that's it but there you go uh thank you for joining us on our mtv cruise uh we will we will be back next week with something new a new a new mission well, the same mission, revisiting <laughs> classics, but yeah. I say classics, old stuff um, and new stuff. Mm. But we will come with a, with, a new, with a new head, with a new show. And uh, until then, uh, thank you for joining us. If you, if you have enjoyed this MTV jaunt and the show in general, please feel free to rate and review us on whatever it is you listen to. It really helps us out, helps people find us. We also have a Patreon if you want bonus episodes. Uh, we are currently talking about video games on there. So that, that's that uh, been a fun jaunt. We've also, you know, you get the entire backlog and we've done a through the ages thing, which was phenomenal fun, frankly. Mm. Um, but otherwise, again, Thank you for listening, and until next time, you stay jammy. Hey everyone, thank you for listening. If you want to help the show keep going, you can be extra jammy by heading over to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash toonjampod. Here you can get a shout out on the show or unlock bonus episodes. Ratings and reviews anywhere you listen to the podcast also really help us out, so thank you. 
and stay jammy.